Hi everyone, my name is Gunnar Falk and welcome to my new YouTube channel, One Body Prophetic. On this channel, it's going to be my goal to do a lot of equipping and training and also gearing towards an X marks the spot on a map, which I'll get to in a moment. And I know that when you go online, there's all kinds of prophetic resources. There's awesome videos. There's even courses you can sign up for. These will just be free videos that I make. Uh, there's books you can have and stuff, and I think that's all great. I'm going to continue to buy those for myself because I, I just really love investing in that. But what I'm getting to is, well, why would you want to subscribe to this channel or be a part of some of the videos uh, with all that out there? And that, that's a great question because there's so much, and we gotta. I want to use our time wisely. So here's going to be the heartbeat of what if I'm doing. It's a little bit different. Uh, to open it up, I just want to read a couple of scriptures really quick. I'll be reading in Ephesians 4. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. But this is where I think it's going to get really key. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Of God. I came back to the Lord after being backslidden for a bit a little over 20 years ago now. And in that time, uh, I'm just so grateful and humble to be a part of it. But I've been part of, I would say, thousands of like prophetic moments and times. Uh, I have hit the streets hard with it, given words of knowledge to people I never knew and, and prophetic encouragements. And I, I just love all that. I've also ministered in churches and helped done all the equipping and all this stuff. But what I was missing until the last about three years ago, I think the Lord was revealing to me that there's an X on his map that he's looking for all the saints to hit. And that X is the unity of the body of Christ and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Now, I would say we all are thinking, hey, I want a knowledge of the Son of God, but I really want to get into that because part of the knowledge of the Son of God is his dying wish in John 17 that we would be one. You know, when I look across the landscape, there's tons of believers. Uh, we have different denominations, and man, I don't want to get into that, and all different kinds of things. And God loves us. We're people. I'm not really excited about some of those systems, but I, I, I love all the people of God. But I think we're going to have to overcome some hurdles in that world. You know, it's kind of funny. The Bible also says, it's by this the world will know or have an intimate knowledge that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. Can I tell you something I really believe? I don't think it's just the love that's exemplified in our little local congregations. I think it might have a lot of local implications because be even outside that camp where it's like across like cities and across really big areas, all the believers, despite our theological differences and doctrinal differences and all that, we find the only common denominator that we have really, which is Jesus Christ alone. One of my favorite things to do is a practical prophetic thing is when I get together with people that I can tell maybe have a really different Christian background than I do or something. And maybe I'm even theologically disconnecting. And it's not that I don't believe in some of the theology that I've been able to access or some of the doctrines I believe in, but I'll just cut to the chase and go, okay, that would just be more of a debate if I had a bad spirit about it when I get into it. And man, I'm not here to get into arguments with people all the time. Tell me this, brother or sister, tell me what Jesus has done in your life this week. And you know what? They'll usually directly answer that question. And then you know what? One of the most prophetic things I know is the spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ. And it springs forth and it's awesome. I love Jesus and he likes you. He has so many prophetic experiences for you and that alone is just absolutely crazy. And it doesn't come with like, well, what's this? Is this prophetic? Is that prophetic? Let me tell you something. Someone's testimony, I'm just going to say, is almost absolutely going to be prophetic when it's based in Jesus Christ. And I love that. I love it. Sometimes it's even more simple than we think. Now, besides getting really practical and teaching you from all these things that I've got to kind of done and experience, and we'll break open some scriptures as I believe Holy Spirit's leading, I just have a ton of content on board that I think I can provide. 
But I'm also going to tell a lot of those stories, too, or different stories that are just practical. Like Jesus, man, he, he used those parables, and I think we all get that. Like, we just learn really well in stories. So I'm not going to have, like, super long videos, usually, that are like a preached message or something. And I'm almost always going to have something a little bit applicable that you can do. Or at least it really hints strongly to something that you can do. Um, no one, I'm not going to collect homework assignments or anything like that, but I do really want you to grow. And sometimes growing is just doing it. Like if you want to grow in the prophetic, do it. If you want to grow in words of knowledge, do it. If you want to grow in seeing your healing gift grow, just go do it. You got to do it again and again and again, and you'll get to see it happen. I'm just convinced uh, as he's called you, like follow your heart, abide in him. And this channel will hopefully help open up the flames of that heart. Another little unique core value as we're looking for that, again, X marks a spot. Let me hint at this too, is without vision, the people perish. In my lifetime, I've seen tons of like influential ministries and people kind of come and go. And that could be for various reasons. It's not just going to be this, but I want to tell you one reason that's kind of impacted me lately. It's we're supposed to do all these things to the unity of the body of Christ, right? Well, if I'm trying to act as some apostle guy or prophet gal or teacher person and I'm not really seeing the unity at the X like the, the, the vision that's his that he died for it's not there that vision's going to fall a little bit short I really think he wants to you know stir the embers in our heart and awaken our love that we just long for his return in such a way that I'm really excited about that we, we start laying down, having to be right all the time and all this other stuff. And instead, we can just simply go, tell me the Jesus that you have. I want to share it. In Romans 16, I used to look at that passage all the time and kind of go, well, man, okay, all these greetings at the end, blah, blah, blah. But man, Romans 1 through 15, that was rich. I think the richest parts in Romans 16, I've become almost convinced of it now. And I'm not throwing out the rest. I think it's all great. It's all scripture it's all for us to see jesus in but there's so much jesus to see in romans 16. in romans 16 is the only place in the new testament that has this little caveat that satan would soon be crushed under their feet boy when it comes to big places to go on the map of god i think crushing satan under our feet that's a place i want to go bring me there well it happens after Paul implores the different saints who were meeting in little different groups across Rome to greet one another and to fellowship one another, to get together, to rub shoulders, to share the Christ that they have. And when they start doing that and they're falling in love with the Son of God, oh my gosh, and he goes on to warn, like, be careful for those who cause divisions or who don't want these things to happen. He warns them strongly on that. And then when that happens, boom! Satan is crushed under their feet. Can I tell you, Paul, he saw the big picture, man. We need to see the big picture. Jesus died for this. It's not just for my sins, and I'm so grateful for that. But it's that we would be one. We need to cross denominational boundaries now. I'm not saying you need to change your theology. I don't think we're ever going to have unity because we all have the same doctrine or the same politics. But what we got to do is simplify some things and share and trust it a bit and go, show me the Jesus in you. And when they tell me that Jesus story, we can share in that. And we can grow in that. We're going to talk about practical ways that's happened. Because for the last several years of my life, I've actually intentionally been pressing in there. I've been looking for people that maybe don't have the same spiritual backgrounds as me. And fortunately, this isn't, I've just traveled a lot in my life. I've, I've gone to radically different conferences, different settings of people of the faith. I've gone to different denominational settings. I've sat in different services that are radically different from one another when it's liturgy and everything. And it's not that I get so excited about, oh, how different that is, and I'm giving myself a medal. But what I've been doing is trying to see the people in there and find the Jesus in them and connect in that and begin to get unity flourishing in my life. I want to help you do that in yours, also in a way where I think you're going to see the prophetic giftings in your life really grow. Because it's your vision in that place that Jesus goes, and you have a faith for it, and you're speaking faith and hope into people from Jesus, which is going to lead to love, is going to let us be in that bond of peace that can come from unity. 
Whenever you see my videos, if there's ever a, a person I'm aware of that if I'm giving a little lesson in life or a little bit of instruction or a little bit of encouragement that they've been really influential to me for, I'm going to give them credit. Um, I really give the credit to Jesus first because he uses us. He uses one another. And so I'm really grateful to him for that. But I have a brother, Henry Hahn. There's going to be a link to a message that uh, Henry shared on YouTube. It's quite a bit longer than this. It's an hour and it's so worth it. That guy, I don't know of anyone else right now who's sharing the message he's sharing on the unity of the saints the way he does. It's profound. As well, I also interviewed him on a podcast I used to do with my friend Richard Jacobson, Unchurching Christianity Without Churchianity. We'll have a link to that too. So you can kind of see what Henry's talking about and get a little bit more of that influence. We'll have more videos to come soon. Thank you very much for being with me today.